today's video is going to be a deep dive into getting icons pixel perfect for web. I'm going to be showing you my process for creating and refining icons as well as how I export them for use in my web designs. Now for this tutorial I'm going to be using a piece of software called Sketch and if you haven't used that before I have actually made a 101 tutorial that you should check out if you haven't already it'll be linked on a card up there and also down below in the description box. So icons. In web design, icons are often used next to a piece of text as a visual representation of what the message is. It just helps to get the point across and gives the eye a visual anchor to hang on to as you're scrolling down the page. They can be small, they can be large, and the process that I'm going to show you applies to both. First though, I guess I should explain what I mean by pixel perfect and why that's something that you should care about. So when you draw a vector icon, or when you copy and paste it in from another resource like the noun project for example, sometimes the icon doesn't sit exactly on the pixel grid. And I find this happens mostly when I would draw an icon in Illustrator as opposed to drawing in Sketch because it tends to snap to the grid quite well when I use shapes in Sketch. But anyway, here's an example of an icon off the grid and on the grid. So both of these icons have been drawn with a two pixel stroke. But you can see in this one here, the two pixels sits perfectly on the grid. So it sits perfectly across two pixels. Whereas in this one here, the line that's the same width is sitting across like half a pixel. So it's not on the grid and it appears faded. If I turn sketch into vector view by unticking show pixels, you can see these icons look pretty much the same and they both look quite good. But when you show the pixel grid, you can see that this one here is not as sharp as this one on the right. Obviously we are really zoomed in here, but this does have an effect on how you see the icon when you're zoomed out as well. I don't know how well this is actually going to show up on video, but when we're seeing the icon at the correct size, the pixel perfect one on the right appears much sharper than the one that isn't. It appears slightly blurry around the edges. Now this difference is going to be especially obvious on high resolution screens like iPhones or Retina laptops for example because the text that's around the icon is going to be nice and sharp and you want your icon to match that sharpness. It's a really subtle detail but design is all about the details. This is what we designers do. We pay attention to things like this and perfecting these icons and getting them onto the pixel grid and making everything look much sharper is going to overall give your design a much higher quality feel even if to the average user looking at it they don't know exactly why they may not notice that you've put this icon on the pixel grid but it's just going to feel better so how do you take this icon and make it pixel perfect well first of all make sure that you're creating your icon at the size that it's going to appear on your site for this example, I am doing a 32 pixel wide icon. You may have heard some talk about designing for 2x or 3x or whatever, but don't worry about that for now. Just create your icon at the final size that it's going to appear in the browser. So then what you want to do with this messed up icon is just pick up all the points and move them so that they snap to the grid. In Sketch, it's really easy to do this. You can just click on the point and go into the details panel and input an exact number so that you know it's going to be perfectly aligned. See how for this point here, for example, I can see it's sitting on the X position of 31.5 and the Y position of 3.2. So if I change this to 32 and 3, it's going to put that line in the exact right spot that I need it. So just go through and do that for all your points. Another detail to pay attention to is See, in this calendar icon, I've got these lines evenly spaced. So there's exactly four pixels between each line. Be aware too that there's a difference between avoiding the faded pixels on straight lines than there is on rounded ones because even though my lines are perfectly on the grid now, you see these corners here still have faded squares and that's okay, that is just how the pixels like render our curved edges on this box, so don't worry about those. As long as the points that are making up your shape are on the grid, you're going to be all good. The amount of work it's going to take you to align an icon to the pixel grid will obviously depend on what shape it is. Some are harder than others. When your icon is looking nice and sharp, that's when you can go and export it for all the screen sizes that you need. So in Sketch, like I showed in my 101 tutorial, it's really easy to just export the icon at 1x or 2x, 3x, as an SVG, whatever it is you need. And because it's vector-based, Sketch will just size up your icon. And because you've already aligned it to the pixel grid at that initial size, it'll still be on the pixel grid when it gets bigger. So that right there was a super quick look at a little detail that I always like to pay attention to in the later stages of my design process. When I'm just in the experimentation phase or the mock-up phase, I tend to just drop icons in and not worry about the grid for now because there's no point in spending the time refining an icon if you're not going to end up using it in the end. So I tend to only go in and do this stage when the design has been approved and I'm getting on to exporting things to hand over to the developer that I work with. I hope you enjoyed hearing about this part of my design process. Let me know in the comments if there's any other little things that you want to hear about because I really want to make more videos like this and share more little pieces of my process. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can see new videos from me every single week in your subscription feed 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye.